So, uh, hi, welcome everybody uh, to the gallery talk of Pan Assemblage. This is uh, a one year celebration of Pan Gallery, the only gay art gallery in the Middle East. Um, and we're celebrating not only prides, but also a year of exhibitions of different types of gay art. We have photography, sculptures, uh, uh, graphic arts, and um, all types uh, of, uh, of art, basically. And uh, that's what makes this exhibition uh, an assemblage of uh, various uh, things. Um, and it makes a whole picture uh, just the way our community is uh, full of different colors and is also some sort of an assemblage uh, of, of different identities. So um, without further ado, I would like to begin and talk about a little bit about inspiration, about creative processes, about um, what makes you tick, what makes you create the art that you are making. Um, and I think we'll be beginning uh, with the people that we have here uh, alphabetically, um, I think, or we'll just go around. Um, so I would like to basically just start with, I curated this exhibition and I chose uh, to present here different types of works um, and some of them are very intricate and some of them are also very simple. Um, for instance, there is a piece of an artist who's not here, Elad Schwarz, who's downstairs. So only a few lines on, on a piece of paper or Juan Boilero, that does these amazing 3D paper art that is also so naive and simple, but yet is very gay and is, is very artistic in thinking out of the box. So what I wanted to present in this ex exhibition is um, the variety that we really have um, in, in, in looking into gay art. Uh, there's so many different types. Hello, welcome, join us. Um, and I'm very happy that it succeeded. We have sculptures here, we have uh, paper art, and uh, even more. So um, I'd like you to, I'd like to invite you all also to go into the website, uh, panartgallery.com, and have a look at the rest of the art that I couldn't put on the walls of a hotel. Uh, there's plenty. So. Um, yeah, I'd like you to, to invite the first artist to speak and to tell us a little bit about the inspiration to their work. Uh, Dwal, since you're so close to me, I'm going to start with you. Um, so uh, basically, Dwal is uh, a graduate of uh, Betzalel. And, um, and he, I, what I want you to say is, first of all, what made you make this collage that you made? You made a collage uh, of uh, uh, Bayad magazine. Yes. Can you tell me a little bit about the magazine? So Bayad magazine is a fun gay male magazine that discusses like the, su the main subject is about dick. Actually, it's about uh, men and what uh, gay men love. Uh, Bayad it's made by hand or just enough. So it depends uh, who reading it. And the thing is that uh, I printed it. it, it the magazine had uh, an issue, but uh, um, the last one was printed uh, about 10 years ago. And since then it started to be digital and he's still dealing in the way that men see men and the men like the ideals that we have, like the masculine and the thing and the, shave one and all the stuff so we try to present a different kind of man the collage downstairs uh, I, one what so. yeah so the collage downstairs is actually talking about uh, daddy issues and 
uh, he present like a um, point of view of uh, daddies and what happened to them when they've been young. I think they can't hear you over there, so maybe we should go. Maybe we should go over here. Yeah, just sit here comfortably in front of the screen. Yeah, make sure. Yes. So the class is actually dealing about uh, my youth. Like I'm been told, been called a daddy a few times. And it was a bit embarrassing, but I was thinking like, what should I put in the collage that is part of me? And talking about daddies. And I was thinking when I was younger, the names that have been called, like as being gay and hello. And to put a different point of view, what can be a daddy, like a part of me, part of people that took picture of them and to present them to create like a collage that mix everything together and see that we're still here. No matter how they call us, we still survive. We still have a uh, mental health mental that uh, all the names and the uh, ways that we've been told and stuff that is written over there, like in uh, on the lines of the, the der and derogatory stuff. terms yeah. of homosexuals, like you faggot. You know, all yeah, these target, like a big rocket yeah. of uh, homosexuals and uh, much more that uh, we don't want to call them by names that people don't remember them anymore. Just we'll be waiting in the small letters typography in the out. I see. And uh, so this piece is made of uh, 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 cut cuttings of the actual magazine yeah. prints. Yeah. Okay. I've been. The magazine was present uh, artists like uh, writers, photographers, artists, illustrators, and uh, some of them I did, and a lot of people from the city and around the world actually did. And the main thing, like because it's my collage, I choose uh, like the most men of art at what I did over there and what I've been writing of that uh, was dealing about the gay community, like the way that people actually see us. You know, like, um, and uh, to cut them, like the magazine was very rich by colors, by the paper colors that uh, I chose the colors, like uh, to combine all the collage, like to not be too much colorful, but to, to present all the colors and printing by black and white. Uh, the reason for that, well, the gay flag is full of colors from black, gray, uh, white, and no, right, actually more brown and all the six flags that is the new gay flag that we have at the moment. But uh, when the magazine was printed, so I print each magazine on different color, but only black color because to take all the sexuality way that we see in people when we look like the skin tone and remove it, you know, and then like to keep only the paper that was colored by the specific pantone that I wanted. It will be and will be connected to the same subject. So the picture that they chose over there was mostly one young man that is big and huge, and all and all the small pictures dealing with the daddy's issues and all the gay community stuff that we are dealing like daily stuff. That how we've been told and how we've been called and what the people call us in the street and what uh, people call us in high school. And, and there, there was also like poetry in that magazine, if I remember right, or like there was a, there was a photography and poetry and art. Um, and um, I wanted to ask what it was like for you to uh, publish a por pornographic magazine in Israel of 2010. Did you get like a really bad backlash? Um, were there any threatening uh, responses or comments, or did you ever get um, okay? Any did you get into trouble because of it? Let's start with trouble. Okay. Like uh, I try to publish that in the uh, underground way, like to be like uh, like not putting that like uh, put advertising on magazine or into website and stuff like that. And it was actually the beginning of Facebook in Israel. So I created a magazine and I probably I created like a like page. You know, that's what it used to be a like page, a fan page that called today and people start to send the messages. What are you doing? This is new, not for Facebook. And you know, they do like a harassment and report and restrict and all this stuff on Facebook. And 
like all the messages that I create, actually they get me more power and more motivation to create like another page and another platform and to find each website and each way to show people in digital way that there is like bad magazine. The com gay community don't need to be like so conservative, like uh, in Nebrak in Israel. Exactly. Things can be more open-minded and we can present our body in a positive way. And everybody, everybody like every, Every Good. type of body. Every type yeah. of body. I like it to be like old, uh, non shaved, hairy, uh, young, uh, skinny. Uh, all types. All different kinds of different colors and stuff. Everything is beautiful. Yeah, yeah everything yes. is beautiful. Yeah. And then they invented Twitter, so luckily now yeah. now you have Twitter. You can uh, you can use. It's very nice. Actually, very like there is a lot of uh, actors over there, and some of them like being in the magazine and stuff. So how so how do people respond today in in opposed to like ten years ago, twelve years ago? Well, today I'm not that special today actually. Like today, that every time that something happened, okay, there's another gay thing in the community, another one get got naked, another one that uh, shows us. Because today, like on Instagram, you can show part of this stuff and people like teasing and have like uh, the uh, big print on the pants or, you know, uh, like uh, full moon pictures and stuff like that. But uh, I've, the main thing that like the comments today to compare to that time, like if I think about like how many people want to write, want to be part of, want to be like modeling, you know, and the business model of the magazine that we have no money. Like, <laughs> yeah. The, mm, the magazine was sold and with one or two advertising that I didn't want it to be full because I used to work in advertising. It was a thing that I, I didn't want to see like every single page. So I create like a model that every time that the issue was printed, the profits was go to print the next one. And all the context, all the art, all the pictures, all the writer, everything, people were doing that. Volunteers. Volunteers. I see. 100%. And there was a lot of people that wanted to, volunteer. wanted to be there. Yeah. And we almost succeeded to combine everything together. Like I had this photographer, okay, this model, let's connect between two of them. This director, this uh, writer, this one, this one want to be interviewed, this one to interview. So it's always combined together. And people actually really love that. Great. Thank you. Thank you so much for the insights. Uh, you can see the piece in the exhibition on the third floor. Uh, it's framed in a very thick, pretty frame, uh, classic. Thank you so much. So, uh, we'll be continuing with uh, Irit. You want to you wanna join me here? Uh, hi, Irit. Thank you for joining us. Um, so, Irit, your piece is a big, huge, flamboyant, lesbian piece. It has two women on the beach uh, touching each other very intimately, but it's also very naive and happy and colorful and uh, I, I'd say even a bit like childish in a way um, because everything is so like happy in that picture uh so it's a, it's a part of a series am i am i correct can you tell me a little bit about about the piece of art yes please oh there you go Thank you. Thank you. Twenty years ago, something like that. Um, it was a period of uh, that it's not like today that everything was uh, that now uh, companies and uh, <laughs> all of them uh, celebrating uh, and uh, it's very commercial today. Twenty years ago, it was a little bit. Uh, it started, and uh, and also the internet was uh, starting, and uh, and I was uh, looking uh, for. Um, I was looking for uh, 
art and uh, women painters uh, that uh, dealing with this uh, um, lesbian relationship and I couldn't find uh, I, I found almost nothing especially in Israel so I said okay so had to change that yes yeah, so I have to be uh, I have to have some courage <laughs> to deal with this and um, if I want to deal with something that is unique and uh, express my life and uh, and uh, also will be interesting so I have to have to have some courage but um, <clears throat> I want to do something that also is got humor and uh, make people smile. And when they see it, I, I looked at the work of Potero. Yes. It's a sculpture with the big ladies. And it, 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 it has kind of humor. People look at it and smile and love it. And, and, uh, I said, okay, maybe it's uh, it's my way to get to, to the people that they see, okay, it's a relationship, it's uh, uh, it's with humor, it's naive, it's uh, but also you you and you it, it you can it's sure that it's two women that are together that are, uh, have a sexual relationship, romantic. I, I thought that uh, if they if they are uh, naked, it will be sure. Yeah, I can uh, give it it in a <laughs> smiling way, in a colorful way, but but you can be sure this is it. And uh, I see that you when we're talking about assemblage, we're talking about bringing actual ready-made pieces into the art. And I see that you you stuck a. Uh, um, uh, 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 what do you call it? So that, uh, wow, seashells. Wow. <laughs> uh, so you stuck that in there, and there's also the clips of the of of the bathing suit, and uh, what else? Yeah. This is an actual painting that you have. Another one. Another painting from this series that I. Printed. Printed, and I blew uh, uh, it into the painting. Also, the the nipples. And the nipples. I wanted to talk about the nipples because the nipples really come out. The three D nipples. So, how did you do that? What did you What did you use? Uh, uh, yeah, so it's a space. space. That you can do it and paint on it. And uh, yes, I, I always, always uh, like to add something to the paintings that is uh, make it a little bit, a little bit from sculpture, a little bit uh, uh, behind the... To come out of the picture. Yeah, to come out, to, to make it uh, some... Really 3D. Uh, really, okay. yeah. So um, this piece is presented down in the uh, hotel's reception and it's really a showstopper i mean people stop in the street and have a look at the nipples especially i've seen all kinds of people standing down and you know walking by and then they're like oh what's that um so can you tell me did you also i asked Dwar the same question did you get any backlash or any um you, you said you made this 20 years ago so almost 20 years ago so were there any responses that were to say not positive? Well, this series was, a, uh, was actually the first the time out, time out, and why not? And all this uh, uh, media, outlet. media out was uh, at the start started, and they started the the, the section of uh, relationship, Madori uh, Hasim of. Uh, Gay women, men, and this series was uh, they, they took the series, and uh, every time there is a there was a, an article, they they put this picture. 
that happened to me once. I was in Pride. Ynet took a, one pic, one picture they took of me, and every time there is a gay item on Ynet, my face is on it. I'm like the gay girl for Ynet, so I know what you mean. Um, so. Yeah. Were they presented? Were they presented in galleries in, in Tel Aviv? I, I didn't uh, maybe because it's so colorful and uh, and, and uh, naive. naive. So uh, I didn't get much uh, <laughs> bad response. Okay. Good. Please continue creating lesbian art. We love it. Thank you so much. Thank you for participating in this exhibition. So, uh, Hamoudi, he made. Uh, okay, there's a really nice story um, that I found out today. That is uh, the, real story. the real story, and um, Hamoudi is not from Tel Aviv originally. Um, oh. Yeah, he came. He came to Tel Aviv, and he moved in with his partner and with a dog. Right, beautiful dog. Where is she? Yeah, yeah she's here. Uh, oh, she's right. sleeping. Never mind. Never mind. <laughs> yeah, they. <laughs> They're all sleeping. So. Um, you basically take you you create pictures from your life right um here let me show this one we have four pieces of hamoudi in this exhibition uh this is one of them it's printed on uh fine art paper one out of one so if you buy that one that's yours uh and you create this on digitally you create it on ipad or uh, this one uh, on Photoshop? Photoshop, yes. Okay. First of all, tell me a little bit about yourself. But I'd like to know more. Yeah, because my illustration is about me, myself, my, uh, 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 I'd like to talk about myself, like being a, a Arabian gay who came from up north uh, in a small village, Bedouin village. Village actually, and um, actually being a gay and a uh, Muslim, Muslim, Arab, uh, Bedouin uh, culture is a little bit uh, hard, and um, I would, uh, a little bit difficult to talk about. Uh, and to me, uh, <laughs> uh, 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 um, in front of uh, a lot of uh, people, actually. Um, so yeah, being in a gate, uh, you could uh, imagine to yourself, it's it's really hard, you know, um, you can uh, be yourself, you know. Um, I remember, like, I always used to, uh, to do arts and uh, to illustrate and uh, to paint and all the time, like, I used to do like uh abstract and uh, nature and uh, like animals um everything but not not yourself not myself not what really i want you know to say or um really to create so you could see like in my art like uh, the whole past years i just used to like uh, do other things that um i just uh, 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 you know, uh, it's about like nature, animals, all that stuff. And um, just in the last two years, when I get out of the closet, I started. You to... recently came out, like yeah. a year, a year and a half ago, or like two years ago. Two years ago. Two years ago. Yeah. Um, then I just started like uh, to create this art. Um, Doing like you could see here, um, where like I uh, have like, big ears and everything just big. And um, it's funny, like uh, 
always people look at me and say like you have big ears and uh, uh, you know you look uh, tall and thin and big uh, feet and just like uh, I used to hear this all the time <laughs> yes and well, what I, they say about people with big feet uh, they use big shoes <laughs> and uh, so w- when I started to create this art I was like okay so now I want to show the world like who am i i'm just like do everything like you know you can see like big feet long uh like long guy and with a uh, big ear like telling so you the took those motifs and just, and, and like, you made them the accented yes. like you okay all the way so yeah why 290 it's not Dude, what is it? Uh, it's in Arabic. And oh, because it, it looks like 290. Yeah, Sorry. Yeah. So, uh, 80, uh, 85. 95. Sorry. Oh. Ah. Which is, uh, uh, Kamodi in, uh, 1995. Which is, uh, uh, date birth. Like, oh. Yeah, it was born in 1995. Uh, 1995. Sorry. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> And how how was like you know you did this exhibition and uh, you did another exhibition in Tel Aviv um, in uh, Beta Riela also uh, and you you were in my exhibition in uh, in the Poly House last year as well so um, my question is uh, were there people um, who uh, how's how's the family and like how does that work. And did they come and see your art? Are they exposed to it? Um, not really. Uh, actually, like I'm just uh, showing my art to my mom. Yeah. And does she like it? She like um, a little bit embarrassed. <laughs> I have a funny story. Um, uh, I have uh this uh painting uh, with the uh, say like Uri's S. In my apartment, <laughs> yeah. Uh, one day, uh, my parents came to visit us, and uh, we like it. It was like before I uh, came out. So we used to split the, our uh, room so it could say like, "This is my room. This is Uri's room." So your roommates, room. yeah. Okay. And one day, like, my mom, she's like, okay, I go to your room to, I need to pray, to do a prayer. I was like, okay, so let's go to my room and I go there and I see like, uh, there is this piece on the wall. My so, ass, so, the wall. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So like, I went to, uh, to, uh, <laughs> to the painting and just take it off and like uh, my mom was like what is this she was like uh, really interested in my art like uh, the abstract one so I tried not you know to show her uh, the, the painting it was like she was so um, uh, she really wanted to see it so <laughs> um, I just showed her uh, showed her uh, the painting and she said nothing and uh, that's it. <laughs> like, uh, okay, um, I don't ask questions. I was see. Really, uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> uh, actually, it was like a start of uh, trying to get out the closet in front of her. Um, so, yeah. Are you in good touch today? Yeah. Are you yeah. good connection? Yeah. Good. She loves story and uh, uh, like every time when she uh, send us food, or it's like uh, you know, like Giffen. Yeah, the vine leaves. Yeah. yeah. Uh, like sort of uh, vegan, and every time she send us food, she like uh, send me uh, 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 food with meat and all that stuff, and for or like just vegan food. This is how she that is food. that is yeah. so exciting. It's so moving to hear it because you know the stereotypes are hard and like meeting like 
reality, it's it's so moving to hear that, you know, things are different. My boyfriend's family is also religious and they accept me completely. So it's um, it's uh, it's very nice. Um, so, uh, yeah, please continue on creating stories from your life. Uh, I'd like you to for like one last question I'm going to ask about the snake. Um, you want to tell me why? Why a snake? You, what do you think about a snake? Uh, what do you think when you see a snake? Uh, well, <laughs> you know, I think a few things, but um, a snake for me, you know, the snake is the queerest uh, animal in the Bible. I mean, he's the one who gives Adam and Eve the apple. Hello, like we're like, we're the smart ones. Here you go. Be smart. But um you know what i mean like it, that's the that's the the knowledge fruit you know so uh yeah it's very queer with with the tongue and everything it goes like you know super queer she has a lid <laughs> yeah um like this whole uh, illustration is about it, it's, it's called I, I name it um, lust for life and for me it's like a, a, a more like everything sexual you could see like here all the mushrooms looks like a, 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 a penis envy penis yes. yeah <laughs> there's an actual mushroom um, that's what it's called ah penis envy okay yeah good to know and you know we could see uh, anyone could uh, think why the jellyfish up there what it could say what, what why it? jellyfish why they're asexual i don't know <laughs> for me and uh i i don't know if you guys tried this before but if you uh in a, in a swimming pool and i tried to jerk off and when the <laughs> <laughs> it just kind of just looks like jellyfish. Like, oh, <laughs> subtle, very subtle. Yes, huh? yes, indeed, I agree, totally. I never came in a pool when I think about it, but uh, yeah. They might like stop inviting you to their uh, pool parties. Uh, yeah, yeah, because I never come in the pool. That's that's really bad. I know. Oh, and uh, the snake is uh, like just sexual fantasy for me. Like when you want, you know, badly to, you know, to try something like sexual, and and stay in a you keep it as a fantasy and just not uh, do it. I see. Okay. Thank you. Um, I I really like the other pieces as well. Uh, the one with the one that you're wearing, get up so we can see this one. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. And the face and everything, I think, is really, it's really a, like a, a picture from one's life, you know, like uh, I've seen this before, you know. <laughs> so thank you so much. And uh, see you in the next exhibition. Uh, next artist is um, a straight woman, but uh, a great ally, and she paints queer men uh, in a most fantastic way. And I am very honored to invite uh, Imbar Dekel, who is also the uh, collections manager in uh, Tiroche Gallery uh african african gallery right yes uh please welcome in bar hello in bar thank you for joining us uh so i'm going to show this piece first uh it's one out of five that we have in the exhibition it's acrylic on paper and um it's very well framed in the exhibition i'm sorry we don't have the actual thing to show uh, and maybe you can tell me a little bit about yourself, first of all. I'm a painter, first and foremost. Um, 
I grew up painting. Um, and then later on, I just, um, I studied at Shinkal. Uh, that's, uh, that's, that's arts, that's a high end yeah, art school. Yeah. It's very hard to get in there. You're like one of the, one of the top leading schools. Of the apartment that was brand new. Mm -hmm. Um, so that was exciting. And, um, I think for my choice of, um, uh, images, because I don't like, I, I used to have a studio and used to have, a um, uh, uh, like model sketching there that I used to host. Um, so that was like the live part of the, the creation. And this is, these are basically images that I choose from magazines um mostly it's online magazines this is for um men's fashion um so yeah just the images themselves they just like intrigue me um and i want to um <laughs> this is very hard talking about yourself um, <laughs> so yeah, so for the longest time, I just felt like my art didn't really have like a place in in the Israeli art because everything is very different and it's very, I don't know, it's not as colorful and flamboyant and popish. It's it's like the opposite. That's how I felt. <laughs> That's very true, yes. And um, yeah, so this is like, I think my second or third group exhibition because like I send my things, you know, to galleries and stuff, but it's always a no. So um this is like a great opportunity for me. Your art is very poppy. I mean it's very colorful. You use very bright colors also on canvas and on paper. Um can you tell me a little bit like why I mean you you paint the queerest men. Okay, like they are, you know, they're they're beautiful, they're very sexy, but you can obviously see that um, something about them is very not straight. Um, can you tell me a little bit about what draws you to that? I think just the part of the aesthetics and the visual beauty. Yeah, straight men are boring, I agree. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> no offense. I mean, yeah. Um, when I used to draw uh, uh, in my studio live models, then I used to book all sorts of models, right? Men, women. But the women, I really like to draw more interesting women, not just, you know, like model types. And with men, I just feel like maybe because I'm a straight woman, I don't know, um, it feels more satisfying to me to draw something that is like an ideal of beauty. Um, so, yeah, and it's always, it's always more satisfying to me than anything else. And I, I feel like I kind of insert like a part of myself into them as well. So it's like the process of, um, I don't remember the word. Um, it's a uh, reciprocity or something like that. It's it's, it's, uh, it's a okay. uh, yeah. So, like, what makes you choose something over another? Like, what made you make this? You call this the golden hour, which is a fantastic name. The golden moment. Sorry, right. Um, so. Uh, yeah, tell me a little bit about so this piece. It starts from the model. Like, I just, uh, this is a just this piece of a larger photo that had another model in the photo. And I just, like, I loved the insinuation of something that's sexual or taboo. Um, but it's not like, boom, in your face, sexual or taboo. But it's it's like peeping into someone doing something that's forbidden. And you know, with the gaze, that's the gaze. actually like the gaze. The gaze. The gaze that's actually 
like you know kind of tempting or 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 like uh, alluring yeah um, very alluring for sure and then like everything came together when i chose like it's it, the act the act itself is pretty clear like what's happening um but then like the the colors came after uh as a part of the plot like it just fit and i was like okay his suit was yellow his suit was like bl blue and i was like okay it should be gold yellow. it should be gold, gold. <laughs> like the, you can't see it here but the background is actually gold like it's gold acrylic um so you can see it in real life so yeah <laughs> Well, I uh, really hope that you continue creating such fabulous, amazing gay men pictures so we can continue selling them on our exhibitions. Thank you so much. Thank you for the opportunity. Yeah. So, Oli, uh, hi, join me, please. Nice shirt. Thank you. Um, so, uh, you create these wonderful, iconic Tel Aviv imageries of gay couples in various colors on your computer, am I right? So, Oli, uh, Hi, join me, please. Nice shirt, thank you. Um, so uh, you create these wonderful, iconic Tel Aviv imageries of gay couples in various colors on your computer, am I right? Yes? Yeah. Okay. Tablet, computer? It's a tablet. It's a tablet, okay. And uh, you print them on Perspex. Uh, which is a piece of uh, like clear plastic. Um, can you tell me a little bit about yourself and how did you come up with this amazing piece? Uh, hi. <laughs> I'm a bit nervous. Uh, so I walk. Uh, how I come up with this piece? One of my two favorite stuff in, uh, that I like to paint is one is men, and the other one is my other passion, which is Tel Aviv city. So I decided to merge uh, my two your two passions. Yeah. So I took a lot of landmarks in Tel Aviv that I relate to. I walk a lot uh, by foot across Tel Aviv. I like to walk here. It's calm calms me down and and this is the place that I hang out in <laughs> so on uh, uh La Guardia. La Guardia. La Guardia is actually next to home so yes. I live right next to that. I see. It's a, it's really iconic buildings that you captured in your in your art. Um there's also uh it's it's also very subtle. I mean uh Yes, they are kissing, but uh, on a first glance, you wouldn't see it's it's two men. You have to actually take a minute uh, to to realize it's a gay couple. Um, and like, how did you think about the technique to put it on perspex? Um, the technique is quite. Uh, I work in the fashion industry. I'm a graphic designer that specialize in. Um, in developing uh, artworks for clothing. So I work for chain stores. So the technique is actually from there and mixed with a wooden engraving, like an old technique and combine the two. And I think of colors and as uh, saturation uh, color sheets. So this is how I came up with that. So it's like, it's like when they do the molds for yeah, if if I do that like by molding, uh, yeah, I can do that by molding. But I choose uh, digitally, so I can do like that. Yeah, it's like a new version of engraving, and the perspex give that like another dimension of 
greedy and extracting all the colors like really really bright so th them. these come in blue and yellow as well uh, and blue and yellow yeah so there we go so this is sawana uh there is another one and this is uh la guardia uh the uh bulldog building <laughs> <laughs> there used to be a bar uh, that's called Bulldog there, but it's gone now. Um, so, um, th is there another series like this that you that you made? Um, yeah, there is another series that's called like um, the Night of Tel Aviv. I took a few hotel rooms and did some scenarios in there, a bit more provocative. Like a pillow, a pillow fight. A pillow fight, a couple having sex, stuff like that, mm. uh, which is the same technique, but a bit different with a um, variety of more, more colors in each piece. So, but it's, it's not different. only one color. It's not only one color, it's, it's more a colorful. I see. And we can see these pieces where? In panartgallery.com. Yes. All right. So, um, how, when did you start creating these? Um, actually, this technique, I, I, when I paint since the young age, I paint in different variety of uh, techniques um, from surrealism to realism. And then I started to do that two years ago, like in the beginning of, of the pandemic. I had like a little, crisis so i stripped down all the technique that i learned and just start uh, drawing black and white on the pen mm. and then i start to shape myself into that mm. and how are the responses um uh, great i really have uh, a really good feedback uh, a lot of interest in um people buy stuff so it's fun good thank god for the pandemic then good uh, thank you so much for joining us today and explaining is there anything else you'd like to say about this all right thank you and my next artist is a wonderful lovely sculpture very talented uh and uh I would even say an elder. Um, he uh, he is the graduate of the Art Institute of Chicago, and uh, he creates his sculptures on live models. He basically takes and puts the cast on the models. Would you like to join me over here? Or should I go over there? So uh, please welcome Yanai Glickman. Thank you for having me. So, this picture is actually not uh, of the finished piece because I didn't have uh, a good picture of the finished piece with a bamboo behind it. But it, it gives away the, the the piece kind of what it looks like. Um, it's a uh, torso of a man uh, from the rear. You can see the buttocks very well and colors and it almost looks like you used fiberglass uh, from because there's little like uh hairs inside the uh inside the piece is very thin. It has to be thick to stabilize so you make these on the model you on put the model. you put the the pieces the plaster on the model and uh, you do also back and front. I've seen also some some front pieces, but we can't display them in the hotel, unfortunately. Um, can you tell me a bit about the creative process? Like how how do you what do you mix in the plaster, and no, what no. are the stages? No, that's a secret ingredient. <laughs> yeah, sorry. <laughs> I, I I call it a big spec, yeah. Because I used many materials, sometimes found out uh, 
found objects sometimes. I, I had uh, many materials uh, like different fabrics and uh, plaster. Because I, I, the technique is, I change it. Mm. I don't always use the same. And in this one, um, is it just one person or were there a few models? The body language, I want to capture the moment. So I ask the person when I have someone that intrigues me, I ask him to become a model for me. I don't take a professional. I can find people like uh, in the pool, uh, the lifeguard, I have few, the one who fixed my uh, air conditioning. Um, I like, I don't like, um, I like people uh, as they are in life and capture the moment when I see them in a, in a way of movement or they inspire me in a way, so. And do you see the sculpture before you finish it the way it would look like, or you just go with the flow? Sometimes I, I uh, put together different pieces and combine them and uh, come to the final form of body. Mm -hmm. And uh, when did you begin creating these sculptures? When I graduated from the Art Institute, I, I did some sculptures there, but not of human. <laughs> of what? I started with the wood, forming different uh, forms of wood. And, um, and then I continued with plaster. And I see it is received very well today. I mean, you have been presenting in Yad uh, Labanim in Ramat Gan, and I, I saw you've been presenting in, in, in other places as well, in Jaffa, in my gallery as well. Uh, and uh, has it always been this way has it, from the beginning? I started painting when I was 10, and then uh, I was in a yeshiva till I was 17, then I joined the army. Uh, I was uh, injured in my spine at the, age, at the end of my army service, and I was in a plaster cast for nine months in Adas hospital. And I think that's why I, I found the plaster material uh, expressing my, my emotional process. So it has a, like a personal connection to you. Yes, it does. That's why I like to deal with a body, with a, with a different movement of body. You, you saw, not all the sculptures are the same. Uh, there are various movements, various types of people, and uh, I continue drawing. When I have a dream, I wake up, I can wake up at 4 or 5 a.m. in the morning and start drawing in my studio. And, uh, yeah. Has, has there ever been a problem with being a gay artist in Israel? Uh, I never saw it as a problem. I mean, g coming to galleries and presenting homosexual or, art or, or... I never found it uh, gay art. They call it art. Like, like, you know, when I was in 1980, the first time in the Louvre, I saw this painting of Flanderin from the 1860s. You know Jean Alamer, the young man sitting by the sea. Yeah. And when I arrived at, uh, at the gallery, 
at the entrance. It opened the pen and I was earlier and there were two guys painting this with chalks on the street in front of the entrance. <laughs> when, I, when I arrived, they started drawing it. When I came out, so I, I went in to the Louvre and then I went first to the, to the cafeteria and this painting was on the right side. And um, then when I went out, I saw that they completed the drawing and it was Flanderin painting in the entrance. So I think I was inspired by Flanderin, by uh, uh, Rodin, the uh, sculptures of Rodin, yes, and David in uh, Michelangelo, yes, and his, um, they call it like the sculptures, the unfinished sculptures at the entrance when you walk in. You see different figures, part of huge, um, rock. rock. Yeah, and um, then I read about him, and he was he woke up like first light. He poured water on the rock, and when he poured the water on the first light, he was able to see the piece of person that is hidden in the rock, and he just took off, you're talking about. he just released. Just release the figure release out of the out of the rock. Out what? So this happens to you also. Do you release the figure out of the platter when you when you create it? Yeah. I do love your studio. You have many wonderful things there. I think we should do a single exhibition to your for your art. So thank you so much for joining us today. Yeah. And last but not least, um, a photographer I like dearly, uh, who also her her piece, her artwork is uh, um, the one that was chosen to be on the poster and the graphics of this exhibition. Uh, I'd like I'd like to invite Kate Zakharova uh, to join me here. So proud to be from. <laughs> so, uh, Kate, you came to Israel two years ago, two and a half years ago. Okay. She can't hear you, you have to be louder. I won kind of lottery. I am a gay woman making picture of gay men in Russia. It's like, um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. not, not the safest thing in yeah. the world. <laughs> uh, so um, this piece, I truly love the aesthetics of it. You asked me to print it on a metallic paper, uh, so it will accent out the uh, the shimmer of the skin. How do you create this? It's so sh like a lot of the aesthetics that you have is very um, maple thorpish style. Actually, it's two dancers. It's, uh, they guy, uh, they, these two guys never saw each other before the photo shooting. And it's always happened to me when I came to studio. I, I had a studio in Moscow be, before I got the uh, several, say it properly in English, before the government should ban 
all of the gay artists, uh, gay people in Russia. Before the law in, uh, yeah. in 2014, the yeah, the propaganda. propaganda. Yeah, so uh, they came to me in studio. I actually, I just asked, uh, two of them came to me and we just started to shoot. And it's always so intimate, intimate moment when two, two people start to unclose themselves and for me it's really touching moment and i always try to not uh, fuck up with this because these people um, um give me the most sensitive that they have their bodies and their souls and this is so amazing so I, I just started to make a shooting. It's a very intimate moment. Yes, of course, always. Even when people, even if it's one guy on the picture and in the studio, and we just start to shoot. And um, if you saw other my, of my pictures, there is a um, really, I make a picture of, uh, uh, penises and yeah you uh, take you take close up pictures yeah. of male genitalia in a in a very um i try to i hope in, i hope in it's a very insane. artistic way very aesthetic and artistic way unfortunately i cannot show this in a hotel in israel uh but uh i really recommend everyone to go into the website and see uh kate's work uh there's a lot of uh uh very interesting close-ups of body parts not necessarily penises but also various body parts um i really like your uh, your black men series and uh um maybe you can tell me a little bit how how it, came, how it came came to mind yes actually for me photography and photoshooting both of uh, of men. But of men, yes, I shoot only men. I don't know why it's happened, but it's so it's kind of therapy. You know, if I could paint, I probably going going to be painters, but I only know how to press the button. So for me, it's kind of therapy because of my condition. All of my models are with closed eyes because I hardly can. Um, get the uh, eye contact and uh, most of my models have the closed mouths and they are always in in the pose really weird not natural pose because of me because it's my inner because all i uh, it's it's how i feel inside it's every my days it's every my nights nightmares and my condition this is this is it have you used photoshop uh hardly because i'm too lazy <laughs> so what you produce is what what yeah. what uh, the camera produces yes there are always people ask me do i make the covers for the skins in in the moment if uh, of respect how much I respect my models. Of course, I try to, you know, delete uh, not pleasant part like uh, uh, so yeah, yeah. not most, the most yes, and kind of freckles, no. and spots, <laughs> zits. <laughs> so yes, it's part of being respectful photographer and delete some kind of um, things. That's all. And muscles, skins, hairs, I love lighting. It. Light a light yeah, it's actually one light sense. <laughs> Nothing. Yeah. So uh fantastic job on that. Um and uh how is your art received here? Because I just came and I connect with you only. It's amazing that uh, people are so warm <laughs> and it's you know i was 
blocked in Facebook, I don't know how many times, usually when every time when I put my works. And a lot of people in photo sites in Russia are full of hate and full of painful words. And it's amazing how people here in Israel uh, are nice and they say, oh my God, <laughs> you about my models actually you know everybody you know that it's the you the terrible situation now in israel in in russia between russia and ukraine I, really my heart is bleeding every day so before this war my models want to come here in israel and salute your gallery actually to to all them was the one who uh, came and sadly they, they, they can't. Yeah. Thank you. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. No, so it's, it's quite all right. It is quite sad. And uh, I really appreciate that you do what you do in spite of the trouble and the danger in Russia. And, you know, you're we're in the same boat here. So it's, yeah. Thank you yeah. so much. Thank you, guys. Thank Continue you. doing what you're doing. Thank you. So, uh, thank you, everyone, for attending this uh, gallery talk. Uh, please go into the website panartgallery.com. You can see all the works that are presenting in this exhibition and in other exhibitions as well, and get a catalog and get a sticker with it. So thank you so much, everyone. Have a great, great evening. Bye-bye.